Hello friends, we are live. I am so excited to be here today. We're gonna be painting a Tuscan landscape. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty stoked because I know I paint flowers all the time, but landscapes can be rough and feel overwhelming and you're gonna have to let me know if the sound is okay. I don't have um, anyone behind the scenes today. I am just solo. We're getting into that busy time of year where my team is doing their thing with wedding season. So I'm on my own. I just want to say hello to Team Replay. If you are Team Replay, I know. Uh, wa uh, watching this right now, please go ahead into comments and let me know. Say Team Replay, hello, hello. We're so glad you're here. Um, and hello to so many of you that are here. I see Virginia. I see Marie. Um, please let me know. Um, sound is low interesting okay i don't know what that means um let me know <clears throat> um hello hi sama hello 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 susie you are not team replay you are live woo um better okay good 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 i do have a heater going so who knows who knows hello gina hello jennifer um hello julie i'm just reading the comments as they come up i'm so glad you're here um who knows? I am using a different microphone today. So anywho, friends, my name is Christy Rice. If you're new here, hello, hello, hello. Hi, John from Florida. Um, oh, more Florida. Sheree. Um, I am obsessed with watercolor. And uh, if you're not new here, you've heard that a million times over. Um, <clears throat> I believe in forgetting rules, forgetting right, and remembering joy ultimately. But also, uh, I do, I do want to teach you. And so today, we're going to be painting a Tuscan landscape and I'm going to go ahead and I want you to see what this bad boy is going to look like here. This is the inspiration photo that I chose. I love this. Hello. Hello, Wanda. I'm so glad you're here. New to the channel. Wow. Lots of Florida. Hi, Angela. <laughs> Susan's from Rhode Island. Awesome. So this is the inspiration image that I chose. Um, really beautiful kind of classic kind of presentation in terms of composition few things i want you to notice right off the bat <clears throat> and don't worry i will uh, have a link to this image when this wrap when the live wraps up if you're watching on replay it's already there um hello myra hello jadex hello hello jess and jennifer curious about the plant behind you love the leaves it's actually paper um, it's a paper piece. It's a geranium. Um, uh, it was one of the original like OGs. I can't remember her name um, who did um, paper uh, plant and floral pieces. So <clears throat> I'll try to look that up. But if anybody can remember, just let us know. So a few things to notice about this composition. You've got this lovely kind of imbalance. You've got a nice big area of sky and very easily um, you know, the photographer could have easily repositioned the camera to have the sky and the green kind of hill take up an even amount of space, but they don't. And that's a beautiful thing for composition. So you have this skinnier strip or shorter, if you will, strip of the green rolling hills. And then you have this nice, big, beautiful chunk of sky. And then all of the interest, that's where we want, a, where I'm going to really focus our attention. Um, the eye is going to go here in the middle where you have the cypress trees. Um, so a few things are going to be important. I'm going to kind of lightly pencil in this uh, composition because this is a strong composition. I don't need to mess with it. Um, that's a beautiful thing about using inspiration images, friends, um, is that if you uh, Google, you know, iconic landscapes, you're going to immediately get a lot of beautiful photographer renditions or their, uh, you know, professional photographers or photographers ideas of what an iconic landscape is. And chances are they are going to be really good at composition. So you're going to kind of have that problem already solved. I don't know what's happening in my hair today. It's like really crooked. Do you think it's crooked? I think it's crooked. Anyway, I digress. Uh, so anyway, if you're just hopping on friends, we're so happy you're here. This is our inspiration image. So I'm going to pencil this in, get to it. I'm going to stop talking about it. I'm actually going and do it. Let me see if I can get this all straightened out. Here we go. All right, friends. So I want you to be able to see everything as I'm working here. 
just doing a little sound check, friends. Uh, give me a thumbs up or some kind of uh, idea that things are sounding good. All right, I just grabbed the first pencil that I saw on my desk. This is a favor Castile um, um, Jumbo. I ordered these by mistake a few years ago. It's a 2B. I actually ended up really enjoying using them. So um, I am also going to be answering questions, friends. Good, I've got some thumbs up. Thank you. So I'll be answering questions as I can, looking up, just also making sure there is no echo, friends. So let me know if you do hear an echo. Uh, we'll do our best to kind of straighten that out. One thing I like to do, maybe it's cheating, I don't know, is I like to kind of mimic the proportions of the photograph, especially if I've chosen a photograph that already has great composition. So I'm actually paint only within this section. I will eventually trim this off and save it as a scrap. All right. So looking at my inspiration image, these rolling hills take up a, a rough like one third of the scene. The rest essentially is sky with an interruption of let's call it just uh, upper hillside or whatever you want to call it. All right. So I'm thinking about, so I've got the basic structure. This is kind of that, it's kind of the horizon line, but this, you know, you've got this bump up of this hill where the little structures are, and that's truly your horizon line. But then you've got this shape here, like a little, like a little mound here that cascades into the green foreground. And then you've got another mound here, the really the same height, which is something really good to notice that also cascades a little bit. Okay. And they're kind of off center. Um, there is another small mound here that really makes this little bit feel off center. This kind of dips a little. I want to make a, a suggestion of that. Um, awesome. Lovely sound. Thank you. Hello, Susan. Fantasy, Audrey, hello. Awesome, awesome. So glad you're all here. If you're just hopping on, friends, we are painting a Tuscan landscape today using watercolor. I, I'm using Academy watercolor paper. I've been actually talking about Academy quite a bit lately, just to give you a little peek at it. Um, Academy watercolor paper is just absolutely uh, phenomenal, friends. It, it does things that you would expect only arches to do. I got to be honest. Who here has used Academy? I got to know. Who here has used Academy and, and has the love affair with Academy like I do? All right. Let me know in comments. Team Replay, get in on this one. So uh, Baohong has um, their professional and then Academy, which is, of course, their student grade. Hi. <laughs> almost um, exclusively use the student grade because I've tried both and the student grade is lovely and I don't feel the need to spend extra on their professional line. So it's 100% cotton, does all the lovely things. I'm going to also be using my Art for Joy Sake palette today. I gotta be honest friends, I'm working on a really big video coming on Saturday as long as all goes well. Um, I am still in the thick of it. It is just, it's probably the most complicated video I've ever produced on this channel. It's insane, but I'm super dupes excited about it. But anyway, my point in mentioning that is that I've been missing my, my palette. She's my baby. I've been missing her cause I've been using 11 other palettes for the last few weeks. Uh, pretty, um, uh, off and on just uh, kind of rotating through those 11 palettes. So anywho. Um, I miss her. All right. So let me see if there's any questions. I use it always. I use it a lot. Love the paper. Good. Yeah. So apparently they have sketchbooks, Academy, Baohong. Um, I did not know this. <clears throat> I did not know this. Oh, that is good to know that it's even reasonably priced in Australia. Jennifer, thank you for letting us know that. I wasn't, I've gotten, I, I've gotten varied feedback on the pricing of it in different in different areas so i'm very very glad to know that all right friends i've got this very much roughed in so i'm going to go ahead with my uh three quarter inch flat wash brush 
Um, a number like a bigger round would be great. Uh, you know, you could do your dagger, but I'm 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 gonna be doing a lot more coverage here, so I, I wanted a little bit of a bigger brush. I'm going right into my fluorescent and then going into a green that's already existing on this palette in the mixing tray. I want something more yellow, especially in the foreground here, friends, especially in the foreground. So I'm heading in using that flat edge down. I'm not using the corners, you know, with it perpendicular, that flat edge down. I'm gonna even grab some just straight up fluorescent. Now my fluorescent yellow is almost empty here and it is, it's pretty dirty with greens. Um, yes, Rick, the, the Academy is a block. Absolutely. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see here. Bertilli set, um, Brit, <laughs> Brit Lily, Bertilli. Oh my gosh. I just bought your brushes and they will be here Friday looking to get some Academy soon. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So dirty, my dirty fluorescent, my fluorescent, my fluorescent is absolutely dirty. So some things that I'm thinking of, um, I'm looking at the more yellow or brighter high, like the high areas, meaning the, the, the light areas. We've got some here just below the, the hill. We've got some here in the foreground, but I'm actually going to exaggerate the, the lightness in the foreground. That's going to help pull the eye forward. And then the darkness, I've got some just grungy greens up here in the upper right of my mixing tray. And I'm going to go ahead. This is wet on dry, friends. And I'm just going to go right ahead in the cent center parts here. It's a little dingier than I had hoped. But um, let me grab a little bit of this bluey mixture. And I am just, I am not making very specific strokes. I'm making just kind of back and forth. I will, you know, you meet people that teach you things as your life kind of unfolds. And one of the things I'll never forget, Ms. Colby Bloom taught me, is to not be as particular about my brush strokes and to just work that brush back and forth, back and forth um, across the page and and to dab and dip and, and, and just kind of like fuss, but lightly instead of being very, very like specific. Um, she was painting skies at the time and water at the time uh, when we were uh, discussing this and this kind of came up this approach where you just kind of sweep the brush and dab the brush across the page and it and it and it allows you to kind of just get a feel for things um, and I love that I'm gonna go ahead and link that whole series below once this video has processed and we're no longer live friends it's gonna be um, if you haven't checked it out please do super fun really really uh, insightful um, we have interviews from Colby. We have paint alongs. Friends, I went ahead and mixed a little bit of the peachiness, reddishness that was on the palette there with my green, my, my yellowy green here, because I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do a really light, water this down a little bit. I just stuck my brush in the water a little bit on this mound just to get a little bit of color going back there, but it's definitely the color is more muted. Um, it's, it's desaturated, if you will. All right. So I've got that going there, friends. Um, and really I don't want to get into the sky quite yet because, you know, for obvious reasons, um, I am going to put a little bit of a stronger red where I think just I'm dabbing it. I'm not creating structure. I'm just dabbing a few little moments of that brighter red where eventually these little structures will, will eventually land. Uh, so, um, I do need this to dry down a little bit. I do, I do, I do. So, uh, friends, this is your time. If you have questions for me, if you've ever had questions for me, um, this is the time to ask them because I'm going to go ahead and, uh, go back to, to my face. So you're going to ask me questions while our painting dries. Hello, Vivian. Hello, uh, Jennifer. I love that you're in the comment section just chatting. Super fun. Um, sorry, um, my hand just got into the shot really crazy. So friends, let me know um, what questions you may have. So the I do see uh, where can you get Academy. I always get mine from Amazon. Honestly, it's the, been always been the easiest. Um, and for me, every time I go, it just seems to be the best price. So Amazon, if you search Christy Rice Amazon Influencer or Christy Rice Amazon page, um, you're going to find a whole section about, um, with links to different academies. So different sizes, they've got 
cold press, hot press, all the things. Um, so you might want to check that out for sure. So friends, if you've ever had a question you've wanted to ask me, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's related to landscapes. Um, I don't care if it's, uh, yeah, ask, ask. And if your team replay, uh, get into comments and ask. I, I really, I am working on, I've gotten pretty behind with answering, um, actually answering comments and not just hitting like the thumbs up and the heart. Um, but I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So I really, um, if you catch me in the next couple of days with your replay comments and questions, you're going to get an answer. Um, so, <clears throat> um, Marie says, how to subway. Oh, burning question. A good starter sketching pencil. All I've ordered, um, is just scratchy and irritating. Okay. Great question. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. My favorite, my absolute favorite um, is the Faber Castell, um, HB, not jumbo. This is jumbo. It's just too big for beginner sketching, but an HB Faber Castell is my absolute favorite. You can't go wrong. I also have that on my Amazon page. If you want to check it out. Um, I think I have a single, a link to a single and a link to a box of them. Um, I feel like I go through them like water. Um, yeah. Let's see. I love that burning question. Are you planning another video with Colby? Virginia says, asks, um, honestly, I am not, uh, at this time, but there is certainly, absolutely, there's no reason in this beautiful world why I wouldn't want to. So maybe we'll have to revisit and do a, a take two in 2023. I am still trying to work with, um, Emma Lafave on, uh, scheduling a time for us uh, to kind of get that going. We both have young children. Um, currently we're, we're both just in the thick of it with illness, and different things. And blah. so we are, Emma LaFave and I are working on that. Isn't she so sweet? I love, I love Emma. Um, so this community is fantastic. Oh my gosh. Um, Carla says she sketches with a Koinor, um, and I have never been able to pronounce that correctly. Jumbo magic pencil. Very interesting. Can you um, give a link to your Amazon page, please? I would love to do that. I am working um, solo today. So if anyone wants to pop a link to my Amazon influencer page with all of my supply links, if anyone knows that page and wants to go ahead and help a girl out, um, I would be so grateful if you could pop that in. Susan says, I love your forget rules sign. Oh, thank you. You're the first person who's noticed it since the studio redo and friends i will be um i will be uh doing kind of a final reveal on the studio um uh since before christmas i was able to finally get this wall behind me done with the soundproof tiles i still have a few more things to do over here on the far side um but i'm going to be doing a full reveal so super excited so thank you um the sign was custom made on etsy um, I cannot remember the name of the gal, but I'll go ahead and find it out and put it in the links below. Friends, stick with me. We are just waiting for some paint to dry so we can move on to the next step here. And um, I'm answering questions. So if you have questions or your team replay, uh, please get in the comment section and ask those questions. Kara says, do you erase pencil marks once painting is done? Usually, no. Um, the way that I paint and the style that I paint, I don't feel the need to do that. Most of the pencil marks usually disappear and the ones that remain, um, usually don't bother me. Yeah. Um, you and Emma are my favorite. Such positivity. Thank you, Myra. Um, question from Jackie, a uh, beginner here, but from what I'm understanding, a good paper is more important than great paint to get watercolor effects. Is that true? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Um, if anyone wants to help a girl, girl out again, I just did a video about this. Um, your best supplies for starting watercolor in 2023, um, really important paper is your number one by a long shot. Paper is number one, far, far ahead of paint. Um, brush, brush is a close second, but honestly paper, if you want those effects, um, effects are more dependent, effects are dependent on paper but effect the watercolor explosions are also dependent on, on the brand of paint. Some, some watercolor travels more, some doesn't. 
So can you tell that I'm in the throes of a, a, a more um, detailed video about different different watercolor brands and different personalities? It's so funny. I am so like knee deep in all this information. Um, but the big thing about a good 100% cotton watercolor paper is that it dries more slowly. And it gives you time to do all the things that you want to do with watercolor. Um, so that's the real important thing. Um, let's see, Vivian, your recent video I ordered the Izaro paints from Belgium. Oh, yes, recently. I'll link that video below. I, I didn't really review because there was nothing bad to say about the Izaro paints from Belgium. They're fantastic, fantastic. Um, it's crazy. Virginia says it's crazy how important the paper is. Um, I'm only two years in and it makes such a difference. Absolutely. Um, Jackie, yeah, go ahead. And it's, it's from last week, so it won't be hard to find. Um, yes, it's Academy Bahong, um, Academy. Yes. Um, um, Marie, it's Emma Lefebvre. Um, and I, I think it's spelled L E F V. Oh, forget it. I'm not going to try. It's lovely in French sounding. Um, just look up Emma Watercolor. Search Emma Watercolor on YouTube. She'll pop right up. She's a huge channel. She's fantastic. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, cheaper than Arches. It's absolutely cheaper than Arches, Tammy. Um, we're going to be getting back to painting soon because this bad boy is almost where I want it to be. But actually, let's, let's talk about that because I just put my hand on it and there is a damp area still. So, um, and I'm going to talk about the price, um, but this is still damp. All that talking I've been doing, friends, this is still damp. So just think about the benefits of that, that you could still be popping in color wet on damp and getting some nice diffusing kind of um, areas. Really just lovely. Um, so the video that I did recently, um, Best Watercolor Supplies for Beginners in 2023, um, I actually had a price comparison up on the screen for you to see. Um, and I compared like the eight by 10, it's like 7.5 by 10 with some of the brands and Arches was somewhere in the close to 40 for 20 sheets. Um, Academy was 18 for 20 sheets and it compared it to Fabriano Artistico, which was, um, I think in the mid twenties for 20 sheets. So definitely, um, pretty that pretty big price difference absolutely um what is your opinion on using a heat tool to dry the paint quicker yeah um i have one it's i don't use it a lot uh it's not a problem i just didn't want the noise and i wanted to answer questions so yeah if you're by yourself and you're not live do go ahead and use the heat tool um i use the 140 Lindsay most often just because it's affordable 300 is like my um guilty pleasure Lovely, lovely. Hello, hello, Jessica Lynn, Jazzy. Love the dagger. I'm so glad to hear it. Um, yes. Oh my gosh. If you live in the tropics, wet on wet is always a challenge. Will the cotton paper help? Actually, the cotton paper will keep, I mean, all that humidity in the tropical environment. Um, the, the cotton paper will stay wet even longer. So, I mean, if that, I'm not sure what your exact issue is with being in the tropics, but you might want to consider a paper. I don't know. You might want to experiment. I know this sounds crazy, but I painted in humid conditions for sure. Um, and I will say this in theory, lesser quality paper, cellulose, wood pulp papers, or just a, a cotton blend should actually function better in theory in a humid location. It'll be an interesting experiment. Mm-hmm. Academy is 39 in in Australia, Jennifer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, couldn't paint plain air, paint indoors with air conditioning on. Mm. Um, Myra says she's using her new Komarebi uh, palette from Mozart. So good. So much fun swatching. That is a fun palette to swatch. Most of the colors in that palette really explode and travel, which is exciting. Um, yes, Marianne says, I'm amazed with how long I can work with a painting now. Learned 
uh, then gave up on watercolor 40 years ago. Okay. <laughs> well, no more of that. Um, all right. So I'm going to flip this camera around and we're going to go ahead and um, get to it, friends, um, because I think, I think she's dry enough to go ahead with it. All right. So this next layer, I want to go ahead and rough in the um the sky i'm going to switch to my half inch dagger from my own collection if you're new to the brushes it is the forget rules brush and i'm going to go right into actually i'm going to go ahead and wet this sky first get a little sloppy there i'm going to just go ahead and i'm just going to go with that brush back and forth now as i come into potential contact with my landscape area I'm going to be a little more careful and kind of make sure I cut in so I don't get craziness and if I do kind of get any craziness any water kind of interrupting that um that horizon line I'm going to go ahead and blot it up but just go ahead in there doesn't have to be perfect I'm going to dig right into the blue on my palette um, I'm going to blot it a little bit. It's probably going to come out stronger than I want, but I'm okay with that. And I'm going to just start these kind of movements, these kind of sway like movements, a little purple on the brush. Nothing wrong with that. I don't want to fill in everywhere. I want to have some white areas. I don't know what kind of sky this is, what that, like what a meteorologist would call that sky, but it's super interesting. Um, this side is more color intense, color rich, so I'm keeping that in mind as I work. It's not as wet over here on the left, so I'm going to, there is something in my water container that has little specks in it, and they keep popping up, and it's kind of annoying me. That's okay. All right, so I'm just going to keep that brush kind of rocking and rolling strokes like this, like rocking a boat back and forth, back and forth. Curved edge of my brush is down. Now those marks are stronger, but they will start to diffuse almost immediately. You can even see that. And then you could, with a, um, a damp, clean brush, kind of blend them out. Friends, I am working in natural light. The sun is shifting and changing, which I actually love. I think that's so one of the most lovely things about filming in natural light and I'm going to go ahead in and cut in a little stronger here down here in this corner and again rinse my brush damp clean brush and then rock back and forth rock back and forth and I'm just going to continue that curved side of the brush brush down is anybody painting along with me let me know in comments if you're painting along because that could be fun or if you're thinking of um, re-watching later and painting with me later I'd love to know what your plans are and notice I'm keeping myself away from this side I'm kind of fading the intensity also fading the texture there's more uh, texture in the sky on this left side I just dipped back into that blue with a light touch. Now that's too linear, so I'm going to go ahead. I just literally pulled the color and the moisture out of the brush, and now I'm going over top, same kind of swaying kind of method. All right. We'll let that go for now. It's got a nice feel. And we can get back into the foreground here a little bit with a second layer. I'm going to stick with this half inch uh, dagger because why not? There is nothing at all wrong with it. My palette, um, many of the colors in my palette in mass tone, which is full coverage, uh, lend a little more opaque. And then there are some actual opaque colors in this palette, like the peach and the pink. So... I, I have to think about, and there are many palettes out there in the world that are, are, are like that, um, where if they're applied in mass tone, it's very easy to get a, a, an opaque effect or a lot more coverage. All right, so I'm just adding in a few more strokes that feel a little more intentional um, in regards to their shape. I am working in this area here, right in here, all right? Um, am I following this photo exactly? absolutely not some of the strokes I'm really kind of blending out and then some I'm like it's like a once 
touchdown and done, get her out, right? I want some texture. I don't want a tremendous amount of texture down here. Later on, I'm probably gonna add a little bit more fussy texture in some very, very, very specific areas. Um, I'm also paying attention. There's some just beautiful curvatures to the landscape that I want to uh, maintain. I, don't, I, I love how the land form, um, it reminds me almost of like a, um, um, oh good heavens, like when you go for, when you play golf, the, what's it called, the green, where it's smooth and it flows and it has, you know, bumps and yeah. It, so I love that kind of contour of the land and I want that vibe to come across. So I'm exaggerating that, adding this, this layer here. And I want to make sure I maintain my bright yellow area. So I'm just kind of back filling in some fluorescent yellow, just very, very lightly. All right. Now you might be wondering like, Christy, when are you going to get to those cypress trees? They're going to be one of the last things I do. Um, but I do like Gen Craft, absolutely. Um, Gen Craft, I did not review it in my upcoming video because I've reviewed it before. Um, it's a really fun palette, a lot of opaque colors in it. Um, uh, they do a nice job. It gets great reviews on Amazon. Um, it has a very distinct personality um, with, if you're new to watercolor, it can be a little tricky because uh, they are more opaque and um, they don't, how do I want to say it? They almost lend a little bit more towards gouache. So um, when you begin with that palette, you can, it's like you learn a little differently if you're a beginner. Yeah, the neon can be opaque, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm just checking through to see if we have any questions, friends. Um, Amazon link someone posts here, thanks. Um, yep. Really need the Christie palette. Oh, I'm not going to argue with that. Rewatch and paint later. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, Virginia says she doesn't find arches all that amazing. I have heard that many times before. Still beginner. Um, all right, let's see. Who, who, who? Any more questions? I'm just letting this area dry. Um, yes, I am using my palette. I, I've been missing some questions, friends, so I do apologize. This is my Art for Joy Sake palette. Um, it is um, it is a small palette, obviously, as you can see, um, but it is a highly curated set of 12 colors. Um, I'm actually reviewing my own palette in the upcoming video. Friends, if you're watching on replay, I'm going to go ahead and link that video that I keep talking about. Um, and it is my uh, picks for the best palettes um, to, there isn't just gonna be one winner, just give you a little preview of that. Um, but this video is going to talk about the different palettes that I review and how they can suit different personalities better. Um, okay, so I'll just give you a little peek at that. It sounds like there was a question about my palette. Um, it's a little drippy here, so I wanna make sure. This is my Art for Joy Sake palette. Uh, it, it comes in a custom collectible tin. There is nothing like this tin on the market in terms of the pattern, which was important to me because I'm just a sucker for visuals. Um, they inspire me so much. And then it's a curated set of 12 colors. Some are very sheer. There's one granulating, slightly granulating color. That's the brown. Um, there are opaque colors, true opaque colors. There's three of those. Um, really fun palette and the the mixing uh, stuff that can happen with my palette is just out of this world so but I'm biased you know you know you know you know if you know you know all right I'm gonna head into these little um, uh, hilly areas here um, I actually want to keep it bright compared to what's in the photo that's just me um, and just kind of define these areas a little bit um, a little secret, a little preview. Friends, I am going to be bringing in some watercolor markers here fairly soon because um, they are my jam. I love them so much. So I'm going to be bringing those in fairly soon. I've got some blue. I am exaggerating. I want to push these hills into the distance. So getting some blue on my brush is really going to help that. So that's fun. 
Um, there's that. And I'm going to wet right here. Right here, there's an interesting pop of a green that I didn't notice at first that I want to get there. So I wet that area and I'm just going to dab that in. Yeah, there we go. And clean my brush and blend out. All right, how are we feeling, friends? How are we feeling? Knee deep, Marie says, knee deep in some of your videos have received your brushes and palette and tiptoeing my way to actually using them. Don't tiptoe, run, 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 run. <laughs> how long to cure paint from tubes and trays? Depends on the brand. Some brands never fully cure. M. Graham is one of them, for example. Um, yeah, so it just depends. It really depends. So here are my watercolor markers. Um, I actually am working on my own, uh, version of these, but for today, I'm going to go ahead and use the Zig brand, uh, Cure Talky Zig clean color. I love these. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, and I'm going to get into it because this is one of my favorite ways to indulge in landscapes is with, uh, watercolor markers and uh, uh, we'll be kind of talking through why um, it's such a fun way and a, kind of an immediate way to define and detail um, it there's a little bit of a learning curve uh, it really just depends on you know how you feel about working with more of like a, a pen like situation um, you know, I, friends, I got to be honest, I'm feeling the need to go ahead in here and to get these cypress trees started. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just making note of kind of where they are and where they emanate from. Some couple there and then there's a little ridge of dark. This is just a dark turquoise green. Um, if you don't have watercolor markers, just use your brush. It's totally fine. Um, so like a dark turquoise green there and then a few little moments here, little skinny ones here. Am I following this exactly? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm not. Now this little road traveling down here and in order to make that road appear, I need to start the cypress kind of up here. Um, down here because I'm going to leave a strip of this light color going. And then I'm going to be going in later with even darker, darker green. I'm just going to rough in a few. I'm not even going to rough in all, but my brain, I'm just feeling like my brain needs a little bit of that to, to continue and to kind of get a sense of where I'm at with things. Um, and I talk about that a lot in terms of painting, like paint in a way, um, you know, that disregards the rules if need be, if it's going to give you a better understanding of where you are and a better idea of where you're headed. And so for right now, I felt like I needed a little bit of the structure of those cypress trees to just that, get a better idea of where um, I was headed, where my brain was at with this composition. And so, so there I did it. Um, just a little touch of it, nothing too crazy. I'm going to go ahead in and rough in these structures a little bit more specifically. I am going to have to get a little opaque with them because I'm going over top of some blue, especially up in this area. I am using just a straight up orange. And I'm being mindful of where the little, the house or villa or whatever we want to call it kind of hits the land and that it continues to curve underneath. So the bottom of the villa where it hits the land, I wanna make sure I still have a curve there, if that makes sense. Go in and add a little soft green while it's still damp, and then blend out with a clean, damp brush. Because you don't, I don't necessarily need a hard line where that villa meets the land, but a softness there is nice, a slight softness. Okay. And then over here, same thing. 
eventually cypress trees are gonna be covering most of this little structure here. But I'm just gonna rough it in, rough in the little um, peak in the roof. I'm making that a little bigger than it actually is, which means I'm actually gonna go over here and make this one even bigger, proportionally speaking, because this one on the left is bigger than this one here. Yeah, and now, right now, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, they look like a piece of anatomy, but it's because the cypress, blah, blah, the cypress trees aren't covering them yet, so I'm not worried about that. All right, I'm gonna head down into this foreground here. My detail, like my focused areas of detail are gonna be up here in these little mounds and down here. Um, so I wanna do some fun linear stuff down here to exaggerate and it's dry brush because remember everything down here is dry. And I'm going in with this kind of creamy green color and just creating some linear moments. And then I can blend out some of them lightly to soften them and make them not as dry. That's lovely. I'm going to move away from there and not touch that anymore. And I'm going to head up here, add a little touch, and blend as well. Lots of blending. This is what I love about watercolor markers, just back and forth between the marker, lay down a little color, grab a damp brush and blendy blend, blendy blend. So fun, so, so um, satisfying to be honest, to be able to work back and forth like that. I, I adore it without having to mix and load. I think maybe that is one of the most exciting parts of working with a watercolor marker because you can do this all with a brush but you're constantly stopping to mix the color and then rinse your brush and reload the color right i know i know you can't unsee that i know <laughs> but it's okay yes kiritake um let me show you a look at um give you a good look at these so it's the kiritake um zig clean color real brush I always just call them watercolor markers, <laughs> but, and all the pigment information's on the back. Lovely, lovely, lovely markers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wish I had that gentle hand. I have such a heavy hand. My goal is to paint more delicately. Virginia, you can do some lovely, um, um, brush drills, honestly, to work on that. Work on that. Yes. Use your shoulder, not your wrist. Very important. Absolutely. Yes. Um, also, um, stand up. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I'm more comfortable making delicate soft marks, um, sitting down, but to kind of learn, re like kind of <laughs> relearn myself, <laughs> Um, it, it can be good to kind of get yourself out of a typical position for a time. Um, also hold, um, hold the marker or instrument, whatever it may be up higher. You're going to have less control. So your instinct will be to hold it light more lightly. If that makes sense. So I find that to be incredibly helpful. All right. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Um, I actually am feeling, 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 feeling the urge to use a liner brush. You know what? Does anybody else lose their liner brush like I do? Um, constantly losing my liner brush. Like it just disappears from my existence. Um, I think I dropped it and it fell. In, oh, yep, there it is. Remember the video I did where I showed you my unsketchbook tour? Yeah, well, apparently I dropped my liner brush into the basket of all my artwork. <laughs> yes, yes, hold it higher, yes. When you hold a brush lower, you get tremendous uh, control. 
but you also get that instinct to grip harder, to just kind of everything gets tighter and closer to the page. Even your, your face, <laughs> you, you might notice. So I have found um, it to be supremely helpful when I need to lighten up, loosen up, to, to pull that grip up instead of down here. Yeah. All right, I'm super dupes feeling the need for some really lovely detail down here in this very, very foreground. I'm not gonna be able to get this kind of small detail with my watercolor markers and I know that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into it with a liner brush and I'm just loading this brush up juicy, which means about 60% pigment, 40% water. That's what gives a juicy brush as I like to call it. And I am just making a series of marks in this one section. This section right here, watch on the photo. I am on the photo. This section, this little kind of pie slice right here is where I'm working, okay? And some of my marks are kind of clustered tighter together to create a little bit of shadow. And some are further apart like that little one down there is actually really thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a little cluster to kind of take my eye off of that one thick, weird stroke that I ended up making. I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna get out of there. I actually really like the way that feels right now. Um, and I also am noticing I want to lift some of this darker color here. We'll see how much of it I'm actually gonna be able to lift. Yeah, it's looking pretty nice. I mean, this is actually positive lifting, friends. It's a little term that I coined. We often, and I believe too much, consider lifting to only be something we do to correct a mistake. But I often use lifting to um, blend, to create an interesting texture in an area. And so while this is a hybrid of the two, like I felt like that was too dark there, um, I also wanted to blend and smooth and now I'm going in with another color. And, and the color is my ivory color, which is definitely more opaque. And so it's going to create a very, very different look here. And look guys, I went right over that cypress tree and it is a-okay because I put that in earlier just to give myself some structure and some sense of where I was at. But it honestly was at the wrong proportion. So I'm removing it and I'm doing some positive blending on that little mound there. I'm getting a little bit um, of a warm warmth to that area, just a little. All right, letting that go. Mm. I am making up some things as I go along as well, friends, and not following this photo exactly because I don't feel like I have to, nor do I want to. Putting some linear while this area is wet and putting some linear moments in here to create shapeliness and movement. Oh, I like that a lot. Shapeliness and movement. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? So fun. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this camera down a little. All right, let's see if we have any All right, I do have a hand, I have some hand painted tote bags. Yes, enjoying the landscape today. I'm so glad you do. I actually did a landscape class with Creative Bug. Um, it was a um, really fun um, waterfall landscape when I visited um, Iceland, and I I do adore landscapes so much, and so I just felt like I really needed to to dive into a landscape. Um, I was feeling the landscape need for sure. All right, I'm just, I'm, I'm just digging in, friends, with this liner brush. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I'm going in here, a little bit of texture, just bouncing that brush along. My landscapes don't tend to be easy breezy. My landscapes tend to have lots of layers. Um, it just seems to be the way I work. But honestly, uh, my a lot of my uh, floral is the same way. 
So um, it kind of makes sense that my landscapes would be that way as well. I'm going in with this light olive from my palette and I'm loading that up juicy as well. And I'm going to go concentrate on this area here, this little pie slice. And add some linear moments. Now the paper there is rippled a little bit. So it's kind of messing with my flow. But it's okay. There we go. And there we go. Remember friends, team replay, wherever you might be tuning in from, uh, keep those questions coming. I'm here for it. I want to answer those questions for you. Oh, Vivian, you took the landscape course on Creative Bug. Awesome. Love doing the waterfall more than the mountain. Yeah. The, wa the waterfall is super fun. <laughs> awesome. All right, I, I'm soon I want to go into these areas. I want to get those cypress trees in, but we can't quite yet because they're damp. Um, this one's not damp, though, so I might go in there and start working on that one. Hmm, let me just mix up. Do I want to do this with a brush or, hmm, I don't know. We'll see. Let's see how the brush feels. Brush feels okay. See how damp that is over here. I'm just testing the water, super damp. So we're gonna be careful. We're gonna be careful. Lifting my my blobby trees that were too damp. All right. For some reason, everything in my space today is taking forever to dry. It's pretty wild. I like adding interesting texture to my skies, exaggerating what I'm seeing. And I got this idea, how fun would it to be, be like to exaggerate this texture that's here on this side and actually like let the brush stroke from the dagger, just let it lie, so to speak. So I figured, well, I'm going to give that a try. If I don't like it, I can always blendy blend it out and I actually kind of like it. So I'm going to let it go at least so far. Isn't it fun? like it. I do, I do, I do, I do. That one is a little ill-shapen. I'll blend her out. <clears throat> All right. Connecting these two bumps. This bump, actually, this one here on the left comes forward in front of the other. There we go. I'm going to re wet the sky up here while I wait for this area to dry a bit. Friends, keep those questions coming. Team replay, if you have questions, keep them coming. I'm here for it. We'll peach into the sky. Let it 
bit more blue. That's a bit much over here. Just to carry it over a little bit more. Yummy sky. Thank you. Love the new sky strokes. Thanks. I kind of like them. Butterflies are not easy, friends. Butterflies are like, they're just not easy. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like alleviate your, your stress about it right now. They're not, they're, there's a lot going on there. They appear like, oh, look, it's just, it's just a, a simple kind of classic. No, mm -mm, simple shapes. No, nothing simple about them. Nothing at all. I am looking at the heights of the cypress trees and where they're meeting the height of this villa, so to speak. Being mindful of that. While this dries, let's go ahead. I want to keep this in view, but while this dries, I'm going to go ahead and show you another way we could have approached this. Yeah, because I still can't get over here. I cannot believe how slowly um, my paper is drying today it's freezing cold i'm in the middle of winter out here in the pennsylvania area in the middle of the winters and my my paper is taking absolutely forever to dry it's unbelievable does anybody ever have that experience where you're just like completely blown away whether your paper takes forever to dry you weren't expecting or it's just that's just not usually my experience at all with my watercolor paper I'm always wanting my paper to um, take longer to dry than it than it does and here I am like just come on now it's just yeah so odd all right let me grab a different watercolor paper Bet you I have a lovely scrap that is just waiting to be loved on. And so I do. Now this is the back end of the correct side of a piece of Academy. So let's see how it does. And I'm also, I'm just going to go ahead and block off. Let's just do something wild and crazy y'all wild and crazy while, um, the, the, dampness of this situation gets itself under control up here um but while i'm actually using this dampness to my benefit so bear with me i did pull out i love colby bloom talks about use whatever you need use whatever you have at your disposal to make a painting do what you want it to do when you want it to do it and so uh to that end i'm bringing out a little bit of bleed proof white in the hopes that that will actually I, I want to brighten up this area back here, but I also want to speed up the dry time a little bit. And I'm thinking that this, this um, bleed proof white might actually help that a little bit. So I'm adding some of that in there and I'm also going to go ahead and lighten up this particular structure here. Um, and you'll be able to bleed proof white is like a gouache. So you, I'm going to be able to re-wet it and reconstitute it. I can go over top of it and it's going to kind of blend into whatever color I add on top of it. All right, let that go. Let's get wild. Isn't it a song? Is that a song? Let's get something. I don't know. It's probably something inappropriate and I'm making a fool of myself. Um, Colby. Yes. It's K O L B I E. Bloom is B L U M E. Yeah. 
Colby Bloom. She's lovely. I talk about her um, a lot because I did a whole series um, with her earlier, uh, later in 2022. Um, all right, so let's get into it. I'm going wild and loose and crazy here and just roughing things in. Wild and loose, wild and loose. This can be helpful. This is something, friends, I want you to recognize and realize um, as you're working on a piece. Give yourself permission as needed. Like this piece really needed to like take a beat, take a moment. Um, there were areas that I was trying, I'm trying to dig into that uh, uh, were not drying as quickly. And instead of fighting it, um, let, put it to the side and let it dry. And do something else you know let it let it let it dry and do something else and so that's what I'm doing because you know why not that's why I think I have so many paintings going all of the time I'm always just messing around um, getting into something as something else is drying um, I'm just I'm constantly there constantly just using this brush I've decided I'm just going to use this brush alone my three-quarter inch flat wash brush here roughing in these strokes letting them work for me so obviously more abstract more wild let's just really have at it with the sky who knows where it's gonna land I'm going to do those kind of sweeping strokes over here, but I'm getting a much more kind of structural vibe. I went wet on dry, so my marks are stronger, bolder, right? I'm still going to blend them out over into here before this paint. I do find that my blue from this palette does have it has some staining ability so I have to work kind of quickly or in a way that keeps that in mind fun 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 and I'm just doing those smiley face strokes rock and roll baby rock and roll let's get a paper towel going do some blotting. This is one of a great tests for a good watercolor if it lets you do these blotting effects. Also, maybe even a better test for a good watercolor paper um, if it lets you blot, get your cloud action in. enjoying that super fun let me see if anybody has any questions I have a cold my ears are plugged oh no love wild and crazy yeah yeah Colby is wise behind her beyond her years she is And I'm just going to continue to blot out. I'm not looking for a realistic sky here, friends. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm looking for some interesting textures. Mm -hmm. All right. Over here, I need some very specific strokes. I've got two colors loaded on my brush, and I'm going to go for it. All right, now, I want a pencil. We need a pencil. This is not the pencil I want, though. 
Sorry, friends. This is what happens when I go kind of, you know what? I've got colored pencils. Let's, let's have at it. Let's do something with a colored pencil, because why not? It's what I had, and it's what I could grab. All right, so this is our this is our, tree, our road of trees, and we're going to just get them going. It's really rough. I am almost just making like lines at first, just to rough it in, and then I'm going to go back, and I can kind of fill. I'm just using the, these are the Luminance um, color pencils from, uh, what is this, Karen Dash? And I don't know what color this is. Uh, dark sap green. There's going to be some over here. Let's get this structure more specific. I'm going to grab a different color for that. Friends, as you're painting, as you're sketching, as you're problem solving, Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. You need to have a conversation with your beautiful self. Walk your way through it. Walk your brain through it. The best way I have found to do that is by talking to myself, cheering myself on, right? Because why the heck not? You are a lovely you. You deserve to have a lovely conversation with yourself. Mm hmm pinky salmony color that I have here and see how it does at roughing in this I'm, I'm calling it a villa because that just feels lovely and romantic don't you think I do I do I do and then this one down here is tinier I'm gonna rough that in it's kind of muddy because it's over top of the blue but it's okay kind of really digging this like I have a video on this channel where I um, used watercolor and colored pencil together. Oh, and it actually, the result I got was so fun. Um, and this just reminds me of that lovely experience that I had with that combination of supplies. I remember uh, when I visited Tuscany, my husband and I went on a trip. Oh my gosh. It was in 2017, maybe? Three weeks in Italy. Just call me the Queen of Sheba, apparently. <laughs> That's how I felt. I was like, honey, we are ridiculous. And we had never done a trip like that before. But anyway, it was so fun. And Tuscany was one of the places I was most excited about. We were there after all the harvest. So it, the land was kind of barren, but it was still very, very much Tuscany. You know what I mean? Like the rolling hillness of things was still very obvious and oh gosh. But I do remember it being so, so difficult to capture an iconic landscape that you had been dreaming about your whole life. It, it felt extremely um, like I am when I am not worthy. I am not worthy. Right? Like, oh my gosh, I remember being like, I have looked at these landscapes and art history books and photography books my whole life. I've been dreaming of painting these scenes my whole life. And I'm like saying to my husband, what is wrong with me? Why is this so hard? But yeah, it's um, it's so interesting when you come face to face with like something you've been dreaming about for so long. Oh my gosh, it's wild. Just wild. Because it's like what your brain believed to be true about a landscape or a situation um, when you're confronted with what actually is true in front of you um it takes some adjustment does that make sense at all does that make sense jennifer that is such a good point i just happen to look up and see your comment um warm water helps activate pigments um quicker and more effectively 
So, anywho. So, this was so fun to do while I was letting this bad boy kind of dry. Um, so, let's go ahead and switch places here. And uh, so, I, I love that. I love, I love uh, being able to have a moment to do that. All right. So, this comes down here. Yep, 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 yep. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The start light. I am using the watercolor markers. And we're going to get in. And the question was, I heard somebody ask about bleed proof white. And yes, indeed, I am using bleed proof white. And it is basically like wash, but heavier. Um, more uh, coverage, more contrast in that coverage. Um, just, just fantastic. I, I'm, I'm a big, 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 big fan of bleed proof white um, in your pieces. Um, I guess some may consider it like mixed media. Um, cause it's kind of like using gouache in your work. Um, but I don't even know gouache and watercolor are both mixed media. So I don't even know if I would call it mixed media, you know, just by the, the nature of introducing, um, bleed proof white into things. I, I don't know. I don't know. How do we feel about that? Do, would, would you call that mixed media necessarily? Um, or is it still watercolor with bleed proof white in your work? Curious to hear the opinions. did not know the cotton papers came in colors. Did you do as you please? Oh gosh, I do not use a brush convenient. Still watercolor, I'd say, says Jessica Lynn. I, I'm always super duped curious to hear people's thoughts on that. I would I would agree. Um, I would agree because they're both um, reconstituted with water. And yeah, so. I'm going in with purple first, a little bit of purple to define the this little tree lined little um, road here. I like that so much. Like I like the feeling that the light is glistening up here on, on the mountain. Yup, yup. How's everybody doing? Let me know that you're still around. Let me know, are you gonna try this after today? You gonna give this one a go? Remember, I am gonna have this linked below. Something to notice with watercolor markers. See what I'm doing here? I've got this bright yellow, but I'm blending it out. The wetness just from the marker can blend out previously applied watercolor marks. Another lovely benefit of um, watercolor markers. One thing I'll notice, and, and these are things that you can take stock of, like this land here um, should have stayed much skinnier, but you know, it's okay. This got thicker. I kind of knew that and kind of corrected it a little bit more over here in this painting. Um, but I want you to not freak out when things like this happen in your paintings. That's why I like to come on here and be super real with you. I'll be honest. I'll show you. I did a little practice piece before I came on. I didn't even go. I didn't keep going with the layers, but I purposely didn't like, I know a lot of artists will do full blown painting before they do their videos. I don't do that. I, I like to come on here and be super duped honest with you. What's happening as I'm going, what, what struggles I'm facing and feeling. And so, um, these are things that are going to happen as you 
proceed through a painting, friends, to be quite honest. And so we have to figure out ways to, to deal with them. And, you know, this particular situation where um, my landscape should have remained kind of continue to taper according to this particular photo and it didn't it's okay so we're gonna actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go do kind of like a really strong kind of um, kind of create a little valley here with a strong contrast that fades into that background a little bit like there's another little hill back there that we didn't know about and I'm gonna create that and of course it's got cypress trees on the horizon because um, we's in Tuscany y'all but yeah I don't I want you to paint with me like truly paint with me work through the the frustrations work through the successes um, and that's why I also think these lives are so incredibly important um, because in a live there's no hiding there's no smoke and mirrors there's there's just you and me and the paint and all the successes and all the failures it's all here for y'all to see and it's so valuable that's why I used to love my art teacher Sue Hand oh gosh I've talked about her before isn't her name so incredible and there's not a time that I say her name on this channel that I don't remark about how incredible her name is. Um, anywho, so there you have it. Um, she would do, I always remember this. She would, um, she worked at like, do you know, like, um, like a craftsman or a husky, like a tool bench type of thing. This is the, this is like the vision I have of her. I just love it so much. Um, she would work at one of those and she would always stand when she painted. She was a standing painter, which God bless her. Um, and she still does it. Um, I, I just couldn't do that. Um, I was always a sitter, sitting, sitting painter. And, um, and she would do these true paint alongs and she would call us all over. Um, and we were allowed to either paint with her or just watch. And most of us just watched because it was such um, an experience to watch her do her thing, right? It was such an experience, but it was also such a wild experience because you got to see her get frustrated and she didn't hide it, man. She did not hide it. She would problem solve in front of her students and the whole nine, and it was flipping fantastic to see your teacher um, problem solve in that way. Just, just wonderful and so incredibly educational and fulfilling. Yes, Myra, I'm so glad you're impressed with that palette. It is a palette that deserves to be impressed with. Mm. I had to grab a drink there, friends. Okay. I'm just having so many ideas about this piece right now. There's so many ways I want to take this. I have to like, wait, I want to go blue. So anyway, back to what I was saying. It is so um, important as a teacher, and you know, you don't have to do it all the time, but to just dive into something um, without preparation, like you would on your own, without being watched by a hundred people, right? I just think that is so um, uh, helpful for y'all to see. I don't know. What do you think? Do you find it helpful to see me problem solve and work through my paintings in a way that like I truly would if I were just like on my own? Is that helpful to you? Or do you just want to see it like come to life, you know, easy breezy, beautiful cover girl? in the comments let me know let me know definitely 
I see Myra saying definitely. Yeah, right? I'm going back in with that bleed proof white. Add a little sparkle. A little sparkle, a little something. Problem solved, yes. This side of this structure is being hit by full sun. So I'm just going to go ahead and make that white, white. And I also have plans. Who knows if I'll actually finish this today? I probably won't. I'm going to get go in here and glaze over a nice, not bright yellow, but a yellow because the sun is over here. The sun's over here and it's going right? Totally. I'll tell you friends, I'm a sucker for opacity. I love opacity, but I'm not like, I don't, I'm not a, I don't like acrylic. It's not my thing. Gouache, meh. I can get into a bleed proof white, but I do love opacity. a few little textural linear moments into the sky because that's just my style. Mm -hmm. So fun. All right, I need to let those white areas dry a little. And knowing when I go over top of them that whatever color I put over top of them, if I go right in within, say, even the next few hours, it is going to lift a little. Let's just take a looky-loo here, friends. I know, I love opacity. Susie says, I love the authentic you. It gives me confidence to just go for it. There's so many little tips we get through these live videos. I'm so glad. You're welcome about the bleed proof white. <laughs> Listening to my thought process. Yeah. Yes. Cynthia says, sometimes I get a drop of water on a place I thought was done and then I have to figure out how to fix it. Absolutely. So let me, let me just talk through like, um, a few problems that I had with this. So the first Hello. The first problem I had with this is that um, as I was developing this area back here, um, I was getting lost and I lost the perspective of this area here. And not that it looks even wrong, but it looks wrong in comparison to my photo, which is where my brain's at, right? So I'm just trying to figure out how to make myself feel better about this mistake I made. But again, it's not so much that it's wrong, right? It's that I, it's different from the photo that my brain has hyper-focused on for reference, right? Now, of course, we've got the, the boobs here. So um, still working through that, but you know, and that's really just because I chose a bright color, higher contrast. What would have fixed that is to let this one be the brightest. Actually, this one should have been the brightest because that's where the sun's hitting and let this one just be dull and fade into the sky a little bit more. Um, and uh, yeah, but those, those are the areas that, listen when I say this, those are the areas that are messing with my head, causing me less confidence, causing me to question myself in other areas that I normally wouldn't actually question myself. So hear what I'm saying. So it's like one quote unquote mistake can kind of derail you in a way, right? From doing what you know very well how to do. So just remember that, that that's why it's so important to, to keep, keep it together emotionally, right? So important because those moments where you make a little, like, I, I even, I just, I really hesitate to call it a mistake, 
but those moments where you change course a little bit and um, it breaks your confidence and it breaks your mojo and your flow, but don't let it. All right. Don't let it. Don't let it. Send those questions through friends i am here for you as i'm wrapping things up uh this painting's far from done but you know um i don't got all day no I'm kidding <laughs> but i would love to answer any uh last questions that you might have friends i am here for you um it is time for me to start getting back to work on that crazy video i've got coming up uh later this week because she is a big one, and I'm really, really excited about her. She's doing some fun cross hatching down here. It's way too early for me to go in to go over top of this white because she's not dry. But anywho, some things that I really adore about this painting. I love this area here. There's some really um, pretty exciting layering things happening with that shadow away i wish i would have made this area just a little bit shorter i could actually fix that um make by making this a little taller um adding a little more interest actually i can do that right now there's a little problem solver so i said i wanted this this hill really is it almost is like an optical illusion i actually don't think it actually is higher necessarily but it appears to be um because of um it being darker over here so i'm going to go ahead and add a little of this interest to the sky that i've got going here i've got it dancing around here in areas and i have a feeling that this if i get enough of it in here in the right way that could make that hill feel a little higher. So we'll see. It's an experiment. Anyhow. Ah, that helped a little. It actually did. This feels a little higher now. Okay. So really love this area. Um, love the sky so much. I'm really happy with the sky. Actually, the correction of this area, correction, quote unquote, um, but making like a dark area here. Um, things that I want to work on is getting this mountain to push back behind this one because right now they're at the same kind of visual fields. Not not thrilled about that. And uh, love this texture down here. I love these like well placed moments of texture. Um, I actually this quick one. She my favorite quick one is totally my favorite which is funny but honestly it happens it happens often <laughs> I think she was saying she likes when I'm authentic um, and I'm sharing my struggles and yeah Marie says was working on making a stationary set for my friend she kept laughing my way through the oopsies and beautiful stamping watercoloring washi tape while she was working through while she was working through her oopsies yeah absolutely yes i would like to know about individual refill purchase as a matter peach and green um go ahead and email hello at christy rice attention kristen refills and uh kristen will get you set up we have a uh, very uh limited stock of refill half pans um very limited stock go ahead Reach out to hello at christyrice.com. Attention, Kristen, need refills in the subject line, um, and that will get you the way you need to, to be. Um, so, all right, friends. So, I've bared my soul. I've shared my struggles. I've uh, shared things uh, that I like about this painting. So, um, I, um, I do have some really fun landscape sessions. Uh, that you should probably watch next friends I'll link them below 
and actually it'll probably pop up on the screen here soon for our replay viewers thank you so much for being with me you're welcome for keeping it real um, thank you so much for being with me today really fun session love it love it love it friends and uh, head into comments if you do decide to paint with me later on this one head into comments with questions friends I wish you so much so much you know what I'm gonna say happy painting all right take care y'all I will see you next time